Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Thanks for joining me on my photo editing live stream where you can submit your images and I edit them for you here live. Uh, normally with Olympus Workspace, but uh, sometimes I have to go into Lightroom for different cameras. And uh, also I always put out one of my pictures for you to submit uh, your edit to me. And it's always fun seeing what you guys do with my edits because uh, some of you guys are really really good editors on photos because you take images that are otherwise rather mundane and boring and make them really interesting so it's always fun to see what you do and I'm, I'm sorry about the noise the uh. all right so another computer mystery to add to the pile I know right no nobody had any large files it just Yeah, just 25 images. Yeah. Oh, Lysippus, how are you? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Multitasking during the streams, right? I do that too. I'll watch a stream on my TV. Uh, usually not even live. I'll just watch a replay. And then uh, I'm usually tapping away on my computer doing other stuff. Uh, testing the HDMI capture thumb. Okay. Oh, we can talk about that, Roberto. Maybe not in this stream, but you know, in, in, in the comments section or email or something, if you're still having issues, if you can't work it out, let me know. Okay. Uh, all right, let's start with the first image. Only 20 minutes into the stream. <laughs> Sorry. And we'll take a quick look at the exif here. These windows are still all jacked up. We have an EM10 Mark III with a 14 to 42 kit lens ISO 200. Awesome. Uh, curious, there's no shutter speed though, unless that's it. No, oh, that's the ISO focal length. No shutter speed. Interesting. One over one second, F22. Ah, oh, this EXIF data makes no sense to me. F22.6, one over one. So one second, because normally it shows up right here. Let me get this fixed. Add to my properties. Add to my properties. Oh, I guess I didn't have it there. Okay. So one second exposure. Let's switch over to this. And we'll start the timer. Yeah, this is a great uh, this is a great image, right? And it's a JPEG. This this image is still not this window's still not sized properly. Hold on. Why? I hope nobody's getting a seizure. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me, this window's not right. Hold on. It makes it hard for me to edit when it's not, when it's not spaced properly. I do that. Let me just close it and reopen it. How come it's not reopening now? Maximize. I'm sorry, guys. It's just.
All right, now it's working. <clears throat> Apple's announcement. I mean, you're funny. You know I don't. I don't go for Apple. All right, I I got it working now. Uh, here we go. So let's let's try this again. Start my timer. This button. Do this. Okay, so we got the EXIF and everything. Yeah, this image is pretty much done, right? Um, fairly sharp. A little bit soft, though, even for a kit lens. So I feel like this might have even been a handheld one second exposure, but maybe not. That's hard to do on an EM10, one second. But this is pretty much edited, so I think the only thing I would do is maybe just crop it a little bit. I'm not sure about this corner here. I'm not, I, I kind of like what's going on right here. So let me try a square crop and just see. Yeah, maybe say four by three. And just come in a little tighter. Right there. Just so I can get more of, see more of what's going on. Because it's, it's almost, when it's wide like that, it's more like a land, it, yeah, it worked better as a landscape scene, didn't it? it that, that, that crop is not working at all. I don't see much I can do with it, except maybe... Maybe just a little bit more sharpness and some mild, mild dehaze. It's pretty much done, though. Yeah, some mi minor, minor deskewing, like John Yutze is saying. He's saying straightening, but it's a little bit of a distortion error, so we need to... Let's do it with keystoning. Let me go this way. Okay, I'm done. So, before and after. Uh... Yeah, so basically just I added more contrast with the haze and did a little bit of the skewing. That's really all this image needed. It's otherwise it's pretty perfect as it is. Good exposure, good lighting. Like I said, it looks like it's been processed already. It's you don't normally get an image this this clean straight out of camera. Uh but maybe. And uh now we can see a little more contrast in the colors. Lightroom would be better at that. I'd like to separate this green from this darker blue green. Yeah, that looks good. Awesome, awesome image. Who's that from? From Randy Shirar. Good. Shirar. Shirar. Hopefully I pronounced that right. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. And here we have from Dawid. Um, are these books? No, these are blocks. I thought these were books at first. So these are wood blocks. This is some kind of chicken coop or something. I don't know. This looks very farm farmy. <laughs> I don't know what. I'm very confused, Dawood. What is this? <laughs> I have no context. This looks a little bit like. 
I don't know. I don't get the bars and what's going on here. But this is this this just needs an art filter, really, because there's nothing to crop. I mean, if I try to crop out. Oops, I didn't I didn't have my timer. I try to crop it out this way. Uh, like with a square crop. And just come over here a bit. Maybe come up. And then add a pop art. Whoops. It's bees. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, pop art's a little too strong. Uh, we'll just do it with saturation and tone curve. So we'll crank up the saturation. Let's do the tone curve first. just to get the blacks in. Now we can do saturation. Oops, that's gradation. Saturation. Okay, right there. A little bit more in the mid-tones. And Let's see, maybe this red here is just a tad strong, so I'm going to adjust the red saturation just down. There. Okay. Uh, slight vignette. Maybe not that much. Right about there. <coughs> I just like working with the, the tone curve, Mark Wolf. I just got a feel for that. Uh, yeah, but I think it's better because you, you have a little more fine tuning you can do with a tone curve versus working with sliders. Now the sliders in Lightroom are much more granular and I prefer working with the sliders in Lightroom as opposed to a tone curve. But in Workspace, the tone curve is, is a lot easier to work with me for to make slight adjustments. Because this is just simply a highlight midtone shadow. I mean, you can get there with the sliders, but it's it's a little bit the court. You know, it's a little bit more coarse, a little bit more, a little harder to, for me to get there that way. Okay, so I yeah, this is all I can do is a slight crop and and uh, and work with the colors. Basically, increase the contrast and crop out the wood chips in the fence and just focus on the uh, colors of the uh, blocks here. I mean, I, I, should, I should crank the highlights just a tiny bit more. It's a little bit dim. There, now I'm done. Uh, so again, just I increase the contrast. Then I pull the red back, saturation of the red. Because red, I don't know, sometimes it's always stronger in the image. A lot of times I find myself dialing the red saturation back a little bit to match the rest of the colors. So, But that's kind of a neat shot, though. That's kind of neat. Okay, David, thanks for sending that one. Let's, uh, let's go to the next one. Oh, cool. Look at the X of here. This is the EM5 Mark III with the 12 to 45 Pro. At f11, wow, 17 millimeters. Wow, let me see. I'd be curious to see how this looked at f5.6. F11 is stopped down quite a bit, and you didn't need to because you're at 1 1 25th of a second ISO 200. So I'd have probably shot this at f5.6, f8 at the most, but if you really wanted everything in focus, I have to do a comparison one day and see. Because I keep telling people, you know, F5, 6, F8 at the most. And then I keep seeing images coming in at F11. So maybe it's me. Maybe I, I need a test for myself and see how much difference there is in depth of field. 
But all right, uh, start the timer here. That's enough critique there. Um, let's, I definitely need to warm this up. I don't know if I should skew it because it is kind of on a slant. This is a very typical like image I would see for uh, like in a clip art, not clip art, but stock footage, right? Stock photography type stuff. Let me get a feel for it. Let me see what it would look like with some keystoning. So I would need to go this way. Yeah, that helps. That helps me a little bit. I'm going to keystone it a little bit. And then I think I'll go a little bit wider. I don't want quite as much green in there. I don't like the foreground too much though. Maybe I'll go up this way. Let me go in a little tighter. I feel like the roots and everything would be a separate picture. I don't think it blends well. All these roots down here blends well with the rest of the image. Because the rest of the image has, you know, repeating patterns and, and you know, lines and everything. And then these roots and these rocks and grass just don't meld with it quite as well. I kind of like this crop a little better. Uh, let's warm it up. Let's try 7500. Yeah, that works. I kind of, I'm kind of sorry I lost the trunk of that tree. Let me just come in a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah, maybe, maybe Tony, you're right. Okay, let's work with the tone curve. I'd like to bring in the highlights here. So the best way really is just to reduce the exposure, then use the tone curve to bring the shadows up. Uh, so now I've brought these highlights in. And let me see the gradation. Maybe, let me just try a gradation to see if I can bring these shadows back in without killing. Uh, gradation is really good at bringing shadows in without killing the highlights in. Uh, so that, that worked pretty much there. And now I'm just going to add a little more contrast this way. Let me see a soft focus real quick. I have to have more blacks. Light the haze. Light pull on the exposure, we'll just do a full stop. I don't think this photo really needed a soft filter after all. Let me let me turn that off and look at it again. Uh yeah, it didn't really need it actually. Let me brighten it back up. Oh, time's up. All right, let's see what we got. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I got a little mixed feelings about the deskewing or key keystoning that I did. It did straighten the trees out, but I kind of like the feel of the other tree. And, and the wide crop, I question also. I think a vertical crop might have worked better. Let me try that real quick. Sorry, I, I have to... I have to try a uh, vertical crop, maybe over here. Eh. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to spend some more time on the composition. That, that's not working either. 
I think the 16 by 9 I did was best. Right up here. All right, a cool shot. Uh, let's move on. And here we have Javier Gerardo Quinteros. <laughs> wow, what an awesome name. Wow, we already have a very soft image here. Interesting. EPL7 with a G14 f2.5 at f8. 1 80th of a second ISO 250. Yeah, again, I think f5.6 might do it. I'll have to experiment a little bit. Because uh, most of my shots are usually not that deep like landscapes um so i'm always shooting at like f5 6 for optimum sharpness or f4 like i do in my real estate photography but why is this image this image is really soft like almost like it has a soft art filter so we have auto gradation everything oh let me start the timer and Let's put it back to a normal gradation. Okay, that helps. And let's crop in. Oh, is this yours, Mark Wolf, this photo? You're the one with the cool name? <laughs> Javier Gerardo Quinteros. I think I got that right. Uh, I'm gonna do a square crop. And I really like, yeah, I like this line of trees. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering how I can grab that because you're not, this is a weird road. Like what is this side versus this? Why is this two lanes and this is one lane? That's what's throwing me off. I never see that here. Uh, let me look at this crop. Yeah, this is weird. I've never seen anything like this. Um, all right, let's do a slight tilt. Now, all of these highlights are blown out. I don't think there's any save in those, but let me let me see what happens. Yeah, they're gone. So And there's people just running in the middle of the street here. Gosh, I don't get this. This is a very odd picture to me. Let me let me warm it up a little bit. Right there. I'm gonna add some dehaze. Some clarity. Add some contrast. And some vignette. Let me go back to normal auto gradation. Oh, it's in a in a university, so there's not a oh that makes sense. Uh, 
I know I just brought the gradation back after I turned it off, but... Oh, 10 seconds. All right. Uh, pop art. And pull the saturation back a little. And just a little bit warmer. About 6,500 and I'm done. <clears throat> okay, so... <laughs> Man, that was a tough shot. I, I almost like the haziness a little better than this. A little better than what I did here with the pop art. Let me try soft filter. All right, I jack. I I totally messed this one up. Oh. But yeah, this image has too much road, not enough tree. So I, I think you need a longer lens to capture, because what I'm trying to capture is the symmetry and this beautiful chaos of the, the trees. I think that's what makes this image work. Uh, all of this road and all of this sky is is really got nothing to do with what's interesting about this picture for me. So, um, yeah, the salt filter is not quite working either. This, this picture really needs a lot more time editing for me to get it to work, but that's... It's mainly about the composition, though, not the editing here. The composition is... is it needs to be a lot tighter. Like, what would have been interesting is, like, if you used a 100 millimeter focal length or something instead of my God, you're probably at what twelve here or something. F8 EPL7. You're, yeah, you're at fourteen millimeters, right? So it's just a bit too wide. But okay. Um, would you shoot with what you got, right? This is not a shot I would have taken it for with with that lens. I would have gotten some something else. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, and I'm gonna try and stick to the timer. <clears throat> yeah, you should go back with a, with a tighter lens and capture capture the trees and that symmetry and chaos, right? It's really interesting. Oh, Lauren, Lauren sent this in. Lauren always has nice tight crops and punchy colors in his images, so He's sending me an EM10 Mark II on a 45 F1.8 at F2, ISO 200, 1/500th of a second. So yeah, perfect settings as always. And this is one of those uh, Aus Aus Australian, Australian, an Aussie. I forget what kind of dog, but they got the they got the different color eyes. And this one's either shaved down a little bit or is a short hair version of it. But these these are great dogs. It's kind of a mix. Looks like a mix between a Siberian Husky and that other dog. I can't remember what it's called though. The name escapes me. Ah, uh, okay. Um, God, nothing to do here, Lauren. It's it's really this is a good shot. I might I might do a square crop. Is all. And let me see. We can work on the sharpness a tiny bit. Let's just try. Try that. Let's um, let's punch up this blue and brighten up this brown eye. So my color wheel. So that looks kind of bluish aqua. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it's not quite. Let's work on the luminance of this orangey brown, red. Of course, a lot of his fur is that color, so I might be. Yeah, I'm jacking up the fur now and not working, not making the eye much better. All right, let's back off. Uh... Yeah, that's it. So we'll do a before and after. 
So yeah, basically all I did was try to bring up the blue in the eye and then a tiny bit of sharpening. But other than that, this image is really good. I mean, the crop gets rid of the mirror. If you could have made the mirror work with that dog, I mean, not, not, you, not that you have a choice, right? But taking out the car mirror and all, I think works. And in Lightroom, I would just brush in a little bit more brightness here on this eye. And that would be it. Which I might be able to do here with a fake brush. Let me see what this does. Yeah, let me zoom in. I quite need one to one. I guess that. And opacity, let me turn this down. <laughs> Blur, reset. Let me try from here. Okay. So there we go. That brought out the eye a little bit, kind of in an artificial way. Of course, now he looks kind of like blind in one eye. I don't know. <laughs> but okay, let's move on to the next shot. That's a great shot, though, of a dog. Where's my, where's my mouse? Here it is. Oh, awesome. Another dog picture. <clears throat> Wow, this one is really tight too. What's the EXIF here? Uh, 40 to 150 kit lens EM10 Mark II. This is from Roberto Di Donato. Oh yeah, you were in the last stream. I don't know if you're here now, but I did. I remember seeing the last stream. Uh, this one, I think, all I'm gonna do is, excuse me, is add some, uh, just add a little bit more clarity and saturation. Let me just pack in some saturation and some clarity just to make the fur a little bit more dramatic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're going to the dogs. Oh, yo, so you're here, Roberto. Okay, let me let me see where I'm at. Yeah, I think a little more saturation. I'd like to bring out the the, the reds and browns in this dog. Yeah, that's fine. I can do it a little bit with the tone curve too. Right there. Just a touch. All right, and then we'll tack in a tiny bit of sharpness. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm done. That's all I would do here. It's a little bit too tight for my taste. <laughs> even, even for me, this is a little bit tight. But uh, all, all there needs to be done here, because there's no cropping, more cropping that needs to be done, is just to bring out the colors and the contrast a little more. And that's, that's all that needed to be done here, really. And uh, by contrast, I wanted to get more contrast in between the, the, the hairs on the dog so that you can do that with clarity. And then I added a little bit of sharpness, again, just to make the contrast in the fur a little bit better. Not that we needed more sharpness because it's already very sharp but it does help bring out the contrast between the individual fur but yeah that looks good i think that uh that came out pretty well all right let's go to the next one oh thanks roberto <laughs> that came out okay right uh, yeah, let's do a square crop and tilt on this one. So let me, let me square it off first. And I'm going to tilt it this way. Uh, 
come in just a tiny bit more. Okay. And uh, let me bring in, I'm going to work with the tone curve first and then work with the colors. Let's bring in, you see these highlights. Oh, this is Rob. So this is probably a macro lens, right? Oh, no, 12 to 40 Pro EM5 Mark III at 5.6. ISO 250, 1 60th of a second. So good settings. Really good settings. Um, I need to bring these highlights back. Let me pull this down. Yeah, so I'm going to go about here. And then I don't, I don't have to be so strong on the tone curve. And go right there. Okay. And let's pull. Let's try 6,000K. Jean-Marc, how are you? Ooh, that's a bit too warm. 5,500. We'll throw in some vignette. And... Ah, that's awesome, Rob. You've been on Instagram for a year. Wow. Congrats, happy anniversary. <laughs> on your Instagram, if that's a thing. <laughs> uh, I'm still a little bit too dark. I'm not digging these colors. Um, come on, zoom in here. Let's... Work on the sharpness a tiny bit. Let's, let's just try it this way first. That may be enough. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. I'm not happy with the, the lighting here, the way I processed it yet. Try 5700. I'm running out of time. Let me push the blacks up. <clears throat> yeah, it is a great lens, right? You can get really close to your subjects with that, right? That's that's the main thing about that lens is the close focusing. You know, other than the obvious versatility of the zoom range, but the close focusing is what's really good about that lens. Oh, I need to I need I need to pop the reds and then I'm out of time. All right. Pop the reds and purples. Okay, so let's do a before and after. Still a little bit dark for my taste. Let's do a third of a stop there. All right, so that's the before and after. We'll let that render. I, I really jacked up the, the, the colors in this. But I think the main thing is the composition. Uh, and the white balance is off. It's still off. I need to cool it off a little bit. I just can't. Let me let me just go to fifty four hundred. All right, now now. Sorry, I'm cheating a little. Okay, so uh, let that render. But yeah, if I had a little more time, I would play with the red and purple magenta colors to bring out more of the flower colors. Uh, and then the composition, I think, is I think the composition is about right, though. I can't think of another way to compose this. I think this composition works. 
this is a, this is a good shot. I'd have probably shot it a little bit slower aperture just to get a little more focus in. But other than that, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Got one more here, and I have to go to Lightroom and see if there's other cameras. I think I saw some Sony's and Nikon's in there too. There's some kind of tractor here. This is not a tractor; it's a bulldozer. Oh, it looks like it might be. No, it's gone. <clears throat> when all the controls up here are gone, yeah, I was thinking there's some potential. This might actually be a working one, but it's not. Uh Huh. I mean, the way the grass is all grown around it. All right, let's look at the EXIF real quick. We have a EM10 Mark II with a 14 to 42 kit lens at f5, ISO 200, 1 200. So perfect settings. Let's just do. Let's do this in black and white, because this yellow and green is not working for me. Is there anything left in the sky? No, the sky is gone. So, we're going to do monotone. Ton of dehaze. Yeah, vi violet is generally a little bit warmer color, considered warmer, violet, magenta, than uh, the opposite, which is green. Greens are a little bit cooler, or marked wolf over there, if that makes sense. Um, I crank up the dehaze, tiny bit of clarity. Is there room for a square crop? No. So we'll stay four by three. Just come in a little tighter this way. Do we even need anything else in here? Maybe just, just that. Oh, that's too tight. Wait. Yeah, that's way too tight. <clears throat> yeah, that works. Uh, tighten in the vignette. And what color? This was green grass, right? Let's see if a red filter darkens that at all. That helps a little. Okay. And let's work with the tone curve. Right about there. Let's crank up the sharpness, turn off this filter. Ironically, it's this image is straight, but the way the tractor is pointing off in the direction it makes it feel crooked. So I'm not going to straighten it. I, I, I want to separate this tractor from the rest of the image somehow. All I can do is maybe more vignette. Let me see what happens here. This is from Juan Belfonte. Yeah, the vignette helps. And let's try a cool filter, see what happens. No. Uh, I don't like that. Let me do it with a tone curve. So we'll make the shadows kind of blue, like that, and pull the midtones 
more yellow. Okay, time's up. All right, so uh, there's the before and after. <clears throat> I think I think I would have to work with this this grassy area a little bit more. So I'd pull the exposure down and then work with the tone curve to make this a little darker because it's kind of taking away from the tractor. Uh, and it needs more contrast, but I think, yeah, that's, that's the direction I would go with this image. Something like that. Maybe, let me crank up the clarity. Maybe that'll do it. Um, that helps a little bit, but okay, let's move on. To, oh, that's the last one. <clears throat> oh, hey, Juan, you're here. Yeah, um, you went black and white also, right? Yeah, I think maybe just split toning just will add a little bit more bite to the image. And, and that's it. If you want to get really carried away, you can do a sky replacement up here and, and all kinds of things. But anyhow, uh, let me go to Lightroom and see if there's anything else from other cameras coming in. And then, then we'll go to the uh, user edits. That's, that's one edit I was trying of mine. But let me... Hold on, it needs a minute to load. Uh, here, viewer edits, and then resynchronize. Okay, so did I do the... Oh, I haven't done this one yet. Okay. And six unknowns. So these are just the viewer edits. I've done that. Oh, I didn't do this one yet either. That's weird. Oh, it's a DNG file. So I need to do this one. Make sure. M1 Mark II. Yeah, those. I haven't done this one. All right, so. Uh, let's work with this one. Oh, let me. Let me adjust the window so it works with the chat window. So this is, looks like a Sony camera, possibly. Oh no, what's this? RW, oh, Panasonic is the RW. I don't know why I think Sony is R. What's the extension for Sony files? I forget. <laughs> uh, 1 400th of a second, F7.1, ISO 200. See, this works. Right? You're at F7.1, but everything is still sharp. I think this is uh, the same spot where we saw the seal last time, right? Um... Okay, let's develop. Let's see what I can do here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to definitely make this a little bit tighter. 16 by 9, maybe come in even tighter. Um That's really tight, but let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's a little bit too tight. What's the other choices I got here? 21 by 20 by seven. Let's try that. And let's just click auto here, auto here just to get started. Yeah, that's way too warm. Let's keep it as a daylight white balance. Add some, uh... oh, I didn't start my timer, sorry. <clears throat> Not that we really need it today. There wasn't a ton of images. Add some clarity. 
tiny bit of dehaze and let's see tiny bit of noise here oh not this one the color noise this one yeah just about right there and then we can add a little sharpening and mask out some of the softer areas let's see right there okay and let's really bring the blacks down push the shadows increase the brightness a little more tiny bit warmer and uh let me just try highlights and whites first let's see if i can accent this a little bit here Okay, let me erase, let me erase a little bit here. Good. Then let's try dehaze those particular spots, tiny bit of clarity. I'm not quite getting <clears throat> I like I like these rocks here. What let me try a different brush. Let me do exposure on this. Oh, I got 28 seconds. More highlights. Ah. Tiny bit of warmth. All right, I'm out of time. Sorry. Okay, so let's see. Uh, man, this is... Um, so I cropped in really wide, right? So that's one thing. And, um, and then just did a little bit of light painting. But that's the final image so yeah I would spend more time just just working on the painting like painting a little bit in here I didn't quite get every everything I wanted just right but that's where I would spend some time is just accenting some of the highlights here and there uh, and I, I need to bring in a little more crispiness in the mountain but I think it's a beautiful shot uh, just as is this would be a lot of fun to work with and it make a great black and white too right so if we look at it black and white, it's really amazing, even in black and white.
I would process it slightly differently. But what I, you know, there's so many good tones in this image uh, that it works either with color or black and white because it's just a really nice spread of tones from very dark to very light and everything in between. So yeah, it's it's a great it's a great shot, great shot, uh, John. All right, let's uh, let's do this one. This is from Tanner Secker. Okay, I like this. Um, very serene. I would have tried you. I think you must be standing in the water or on a little boat because how are you like right? It's like you're standing right in the middle of the water. Um, but the water is not moving. There's no ripples. So you must be standing on the land. This is I, technically it's a very interesting picture for me. How you got this shot. I, I just don't I don't get this how there's no motion. It's very shallow. And it'd be really hard to stand in the water or have a boat without creating ripples. Anyhow, yeah, I'm curious how you got this shot because this is one five hundredth of a second, 14 millimeters at 5.6 kit lens. Um, all right, let's uh, let's let's develop this. So. Oh, thanks, John. I, I'm glad you like that edit of your image. There's some delay on the chat section. I'm just seeing them, seeing them about a half a minute later. Uh, this one, I, I wish these flowers were a little bit closer up here. These lilies. I'd like to crop this wide. Um, Let me see, if I do 16 by 9, can I get away with at least a 16 by 9? Maybe. Oh, look, this almost fits in the Fibonacci circle right there, huh? Oh, not quite, but anyway. We'll, bre we'll break a composition rule today. Let's click auto to get started, but definitely I'm going to pull the blacks. This needs to be a lot warmer right in there. But this bottom half is already pretty warm, so I'm going to cool this back off uh, this way. This needs a little more clarity and texture too. Right about there. Okay, good. I can I can warm this back up a little bit. Oh, let me cool this off again. All right, good. And uh, let's see, let's add a tiny bit of the haze, pull the blacks back up, clarity, and then let's work on the sharpness. See, this is a good example of a landscape shot at f5.6, right? Everything is still in focus. So for everyone shooting f11 on micro four thirds, you can, you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to f5.6. All right, let's reduce a tiny bit of the color noise. And uh, yeah, it does add some depth. I agree, Plato. That's a good point about the flowers adding some depth. It doesn't need any luminance. Well, maybe a tiny bit of luminance, a tiny bit more color. Okay. 
And then we'll add the sharpening back in. Mask it like so. Okay. Dang it, it's still, the image is still a bit too... Let me do this. All the highlights for... I don't know if I should cool it looks better a little bit cooler than warmer but I want it to be hit 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 the image right about there oops I'm out of time okay so uh, let's see how I did here uh, yeah, that looks good. I think the crop was the most important thing on this image. Um, it was just a little bit too much space. Oh, hey, John, how are you? Um, there was too much space around the image. But I think this works. I think a vertical crop might have worked, too. Let me just take a quick look. Something like that. Not quite that wide. Let's do a four by three. Like I bet, I bet something like that would work too. Right? Uh, not quite as good as the, <laughs> no, not quite as good as the wide, right? Yeah, this, this is better. And I think, if I full, let's see what black and white does. No. It this has some potential, but I'd have to add, I'd have to process it very differently. But I think yeah. I think this um that's not a bad edit. Okay. So that's all the pictures. Awesome, awesome, awesome shots this week. I really liked, I think I have to give John Yutsei the, the, the gold medal today though. That, that's an amazing shot. And, and the black and white worked really well too. I like the black and white even better. <laughs> and then, yeah, this one from Tanner is really good too. I need to process this more to really do a good job. But in the interest of time, let's go to the viewer edits. Uh, right here and grid So this was my edit I think this is the edit I did but let me show you the, the original uh, <clears throat> This is the original image here um, So you can see the shadows are a little bit too dark I was trying to I don't know what I was doing exposure wise I think I was a little flustered because you don't get to see a deer with a full rack in a sunset very often, right? What are the odds of that? <laughs> so I was just trying to get his, get get the shot because I have about 30 or 40 pictures of this deer and all of them are blurry except this one because I just, I just said, oh my God, look at this deer in the sunset. You know, how perfect is that? <laughs> so um, this was the only one that was sharp, but then the exposure, I didn't have time to think about the exposure. You know, I just... I, Rookie mistakes all across the board, right? Oh, my battery. Hold on. Okay, so anyway, that's a little background. Oops, you're getting like, where's, <clears throat> you're getting weird. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's the history of this. That's, that's the background to this picture. Uh, but let's, let's see what you guys did with this. Uh, 
All right, so this looks like a basic. Let's let's put the person's name up here. Antonio as a Casado. Uh, yeah, this is a grainy black and white conversion. Nice. I mean, didn't do much with the tones here, but you did get rid of a lot of the a lot of the inconsistencies in the tones, right? That are up here, because that that was one of the problems with this image was you know the highlights were kind of blown and not blown, and they were just ugly, right? So I think this gets rid of a lot of that sort of uh, ugliness out of the image. Um, so this is a good edit. This is good. This looks like it was taken with a film camera. This is probably exactly how it would come out. And this one, let's see, this is uh, from Joni. Okay, good job. Good job bringing up the highlights. And you didn't, I don't think you added any grain. It's hard to tell because when you bring up shadows a lot, sometimes you get grain no matter what. A little bit of over sharpening maybe, but other than that, this is a good edit. Um, and I like the crop. This is a good square crop. I went with a similar crop when I was doing my black and white uh, for the same reason that, um, you know, who was it? This uh, Antonio was doing, right? Getting rid of the highlights, but it looks like you kept a little bit more here. This is actually a shadow of a tree right here in the background. It's all blown out. And from Image Rider, okay. This crop is a little bit tight on the right side for me. But, yeah, there's, this is really too dark. Wait a minute. This is another thing, <clears throat> Joni, this is another thing. You did a really good job brushing out this blade of grass here. Um, I just I just noticed that I can see that where you where you brushed it out now a good job all right on this one here <clears throat> excuse me it's a little bit too dark I think still so I would I would silhouette everything out if I was going to go this dark and then I'm, I think it might work out a little better Oh, there was snot in the deer's nose, too. I didn't see that. I'll have to look for that. I see a little bit of brushing there, though. That's true. <laughs> Image writer said, screw it, you know? <clears throat> so maybe, because this is two images, right? Side by side, almost. Um, if I do this, I think the, these are both by Image writer, right? Whoops. So he did one color, one black and white. So he separated the tones, right? The very high highlights on the right with the shadows on the left. But this is what I mean about the highlights. They're just so ugly. God, these are the worst highlights ever. And it's not the processing, it's just a bad, bad, badly exposed image. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, Lauren is here. How are you, Lauren? <laughs> that was a great dog shot, by the way. I love that dog. Okay, Ralph. Ralph did a good job, too. He, he also edited out that blade of grass. Yeah, good crop. Nice plate uh, overlay here. Or not plate, plate type, but yeah, definitely old film. Uh... Beautiful sepia. You should like this one, Lauren. Nice sepia tones to this. Really, really good processing. This is definitely, definitely the best one so far, I think. Uh, so good job, Ralph. And this is uh, Javier. Okay, Javier. So basically you brought up all the shadows, but you did nothing with the, I think the contrast needs to be stronger. Uh, and you'll see that when you see my edit, because I went with basically the same edit. I didn't crop it at all. I raised the shadows, but I worked more on the highlights, uh, or I'm sorry, more on the contrast. 
But this is very similar to what I did. Um, this was the 75 to 300. I can show you. See, 75 to 300. There's the exit data in the top left. Uh, okay, Marcel, this is a good edit. It looks like you're trying to work with the highlights. You, at least you got the highlights not to be so ugly. Now it's just sort of a, a graduated blend off into the you know distance. But um, yeah, the highlights the highlights were the hardest part of this image to get right. And I I just even in editing I couldn't get it the way I wanted it. This is probably the best highlight without blowing them completely out. This is probably the best editing of the highlights I think for this image. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is this is a good this is a good edit, Marcel. It has a very interesting feel to it, also. Uh, not quite. I don't know. It has a very interesting feel to it. I like I like how this image feels. It's not it's not what I would expect from an image like this. This kind of feeling, but this is definitely a little bit different feeling than the rest that I've seen so far. And, uh, oh, Roberto. Roberto tried to do just a full-on sky replacement. So, you know, everybody's seeing the same problem, right? The highlights, the background are just so bad. Uh, so I think, I think the camera overcomp... I don't know what mode I was in. I was probably in, in full automatic metering where the camera just... Tried to save the highlights and the shadows. You know, it just screwed up the exposure. But, uh, yeah, good job. Man, you went through all the trouble of putting the sky in, but then you left this blade of grass right here, right? <laughs> At least I'm not in a rut. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is, wow, see, it's interesting, John, John is the same way, right? He got rid of all of those highlights from the image, like, um, Roberto just did a sky replacement, John, this is kind of a sky replacement, but you're just using orange sky, it's kind of like the fires in California when the sky's all turned orange, <laughs> um, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Saturation heaven, yeah. And that's the other thing, the colors were so washed out overall in this image, it was hard to, I did a better job in Lightroom, but I, I'll show you my workspace edit. This is this is a good edit, Who, this is Lauren or something? Oh, John Utse. Yeah, this is a nice edit. I mean, you went with a nice soft uh, vignette which I just could not duplicate in, oh, excuse me, in workspace. But yeah, this is a nice soft edit. Really, really nice, John. Wow, you're like firing on all eight cylinders today, aren't you? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this is a good one. I'd have to say this is maybe my favorite one. I'll have to look at them all again, but that might be my favorite one so far. So you got the two, my two favorite images today. Uh, oh, okay, same thing here. You blew the highlights out, you crushed the blacks. Who, who is this? Surge. Okay, Surge. I think this is an interesting edit, too. I mean, at, at, at first I was thinking I didn't like how you crush the blacks on the deer, but actually I kind of like it now that I'm looking at it just for a little bit. If you just kind of look at it like as a whole, instead of, you know, as photographers, right, we focus on all the little details, right? But sometimes you have to, you have to step back and look at the picture as a whole, and I think this works. Yeah, I think I think this this edit works actually. Cuz at first I was like, oh, you know, there's the shadows are crushed to black, the highlights are totally gone, but actually I like this. This is a really good edit too. 
at, overall when you look at it instead of nitpicking the individual things right i think you got the right you did this one good all right this is uh i think this is neo right let me see yeah neo because every time i see this this framing you know it kind of reminds me of neo's work uh neo's really good at working with colors and things so he did a good job here as always has a very different different mood to it also every every edit is very different this time right they're kind of the same but they're all different every every edit today feels like i got a very different feeling I mean, this is kind of a very, like, touchy-feely image anyway. You know, you have a deer in the sunset. But how you process it really, I think, has been... I'm really feeling a very different mood or aura from the image. So, yeah, good job. Uh, this is... I think this is my edit. Yeah, this... This is my edit. So, uh not so great not so great i don't like anything about this edit i did this edit in workspace um i don't know if my lightroom edit my my lightroom edit was a little better i was able to recover some of the clouds in the sky a little better in lightroom and then i saturated this let me see if i can find it oh wait we have We have another one here before we go talk about mine. Dawid. Oh, okay, Dawid. Yeah, Lauren, I'd have to like, um, to expose this shot properly. I mean, like I said, this was kind of like a shock moment for me to get a deer in the sunset. So I didn't really have time to think about the exposure. Uh, you know, just, I was just, I don't know. It was one of my rookie days where I was not fast. My my gears were not turning. Plus, I had Ellie with me. So I was, you know, and Ellie was like, you know, white on rice. Her eyes were like... <laughs> so I was worried she was going to, you know, scare it off, too. So I had all kinds of conflicting, conflicting, competing... What's the word I'm looking for? I had competing uh, things going on, right? To my dog, the exposure, the deer, the sunset. I'm like... Everything was kind of coming at me at once, very quickly. But um, yeah, this is a good edit. Full on orange. That's cool. Yeah, some really good edits today. And Deb, this is, okay, good. So you brought the highlights down and the shadows up. But unfortunately, see, I did the same thing, right? But then the contrast just isn't there, which I think works better for this image. And you brushed out the grass covering the eye. I can see that. So you did, you did a lot of work on this image. I would have just liked to see a little more contrast, but yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't an easy, it wasn't as easy as I thought to edit this image. So when I saw the image, I said, oh, this, this has some potential, right? And then when I started editing, I was like, oh my God, this is like really hard. Um, but yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's the end of them. I mean, let me show you one other one. I took this in 20, 2018, third quarter, August, no, 2019, third quarter, on the 16th, and it was all the way down here. I'll show you a couple other shots. Let's go raw. See, there's some other deers I was thinking about giving you guys to edit, but this one deer, you can see I took like a billion shots of it. <clears throat> so here it is, right? Like this one's not bad. Uh, but the sunset wasn't quite right, right? So. I was trying to get it, but then he had his head down here. This was a good shot, but his head was down. This was a good shot, but I missed focus. 
I just jacked this up so bad, you have no idea. Uh, what's the one I ended up using? Um, this is a good shot, I think. Is it in focus? Yeah, that one's in focus. That's not a bad shot. But then I cut his antlers off. Where's the shot? I should have tagged it or something. Did I tag it? I did tag it. Here it is. That's unedited. Edited. That's a black and white edit I did. I didn't like this one. Let me see if I knew I should have saved it. Is there any history? No, there's no. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to bore you to death, but I, I really want to. Yeah, this is the one. I think. God, I did a lot of editing here. Somewhere in here. I don't know. Ah, terrible. All right, I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> Won't bore you with all that. I was, but as you can see, I was struggling with it too. I was just not having much luck and you guys did you guys did really amazing work with it let's go back and just let me just thumbnail it yeah these are all really good edits definitely compared to what i did I don't know. I like I like John's the best. I don't know why. Cuz these are all really good. So um yeah, John, you got 2 for 2, two of the best images today, I think. At least in <laughs> you know, on the Rob Trek scale. I like it. I like those two. Uh All right, so we'll call it. So amazing, amazing images submitted today. Really beautiful from everyone and uh, hopefully the edits I did came out okay. I think most of the edits I did today look pretty good. I mean, not they weren't done, you know, but uh, there's definitely more to do. And then the, the edits you guys did of this picture were really impressive, all of them. So uh, thanks, thanks everybody for sending those in. I really appreciate it. It's always a lot of fun editing with you, with you all. Um, I'll be back on Thursday, I think. I might have a photo job, but. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you guys again soon.